We are live. Hello, anyone who tunes in, turns on, or stumbles into our podcast. I'm Joshua Royland, a strength and conditioning specialist and owner of Sweatshirt Fitness. Our guest today is Greg Diem, a recent physical therapy graduate from the prestigious Quinnipiac University. He's also my longtime friend. Today, we will be discussing your journey into physical culture and exercise, your educational experience, and your recommendations for young athletes and general population in relation to injury prevention. How are you doing today, Greg? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? Doing all right. That's always seemed to be something that I try to encourage in people is the overall healthy lifestyle. And ultimately, for athletes specifically, that seems to be a general population kind of deal, which is just increase your activity because overall our population is like very far out of the realm of health. They just have to get out and walk, get up from the couch. No, no cheesy poofs. <laughs> but I mean, so let's, let's go into the athletes really quickly. What's like the most general injury you would see in an athlete? And let's just say any athlete. So if I want to talk more about like the older population athlete, like the weekend warrior, you see a lot of like hamstring strains and things along that nature, like calf strain tendinopathy type of issue, because you're seeing people that are kind of going from that zero to a hundred. They're not they're sitting down at a desk job 40 hours a week and then on the weekends they want to run and play tennis so that's like your general athlete more out of shape you know they're not keeping up with their stretching they're not always putting the best fuel on their body but if we're talking like an a high school athlete it could be really a wide variety because you're seeing a lot of different sports a lot, a lot of contact sports um, how would you handle such a complex issue so say a kid comes into you with piriformis tightness is that something that could eventually result in all of those other issues if, if mishandled? Well, a lot of times what I see is people who have piriformis tightness. It's really secondary to almost like an underlying back injury where that piriformis muscle will be taking on a lot of the load or so it could also additionally be because the back's in an off alignment because of pain and or injury that that piriformis is going to be misaligned and tighter than it normally would be on that side of back injury. Okay. Um, it's, it's very common to see. So a lot of times releasing the piriformis tightness can help to bring the lumbar spine into a better posture and decrease pain. But in someone like uh, Chad's case, it seems like it's a different scenario where he had a lot going on at once. But I, yeah, I would, I would treat, if, if he walked into my clinic, I would treat all the different findings I'm seeing. You know, he probably would come in with a, like an ankle diagnosis or you said he had like a hallux. Well, the, the issue is he in works in general, like cross country and track. There's a lot of things like someone like me, if I were training an athlete, I'd be looking for foot, ankle, knee, hip, back, just because that's, that's the, the chain I'd be looking yeah. at. I'd, I'd be looking at, you know, how their, how the fascial slings are functioning. So are they able to properly extend their femur behind their actual hips properly? Do they have the flexibility in their hip flexors? Are, are they actually properly, because people, so many people think that your hips should be moving like this. You actually need a slight rotation to your hips when you're actually moving in order to get proper mechanics. So I'd be looking at a, a lot of different things when I'm looking at a, a recording of someone's running on a treadmill. What would you say is really predominant and go from like the list of highest importance to lowest importance on what you have to look for? Uh, yeah, so I liked how you were talking about uh, looking at someone running on a treadmill. That's something that I've seen in the clinic that we, we've done before with our runners that have come in, and it's important to we, we've slowed it down into slow motion before. I like to look at everything. It can give you a lot of information. Looking at how they're hitting the ground, are they getting a heel strike? Are they overly supinated? Are they overly pronated? You want to see, you know, if they're getting that nice heel to toe. You know, looking at the hips can give you a lot of information, like you said. Um, you know, are they getting full extension on initial contact? Are they getting a nice swing, enough, enough hip flexion, enough knee flexion when, when they're running? How's their, you know, how's, you can get, look at their cadence, their stride length. There's a lot of information that you can get from running. I'd say, I wouldn't say there's one particular scenario. Great leg with this ever so slightest bend to it. So you're able to use your quad as a force acceptor rather than a straight line between your heel, your knee, and your hip. So that quad can decrease both the force on the knee and the hip. And what ends up happening is you do put a little bit extra pressure on the 
tendons and ligaments in the knee as you're decreasing that speed, but you're putting less pressure on the cartilage. So I find putting more pressure on the tendons and the connective tissue is more important than just focusing on using that cartilage to keep that impact. Oh, definitely. So yeah. definitely using that as that sort of spring. And again, you have to work up to it because otherwise you're going to get, you know, like you said, just tendonitis. You're going to get all of this inflammation. You're going to get patellofemoral symptoms and, and all of this. So it's a pain, but you, if you properly create volume and, and allow,